Hey guys, this is a live, uh, unscripted recording. I just had been going through this concept with a client today, and I have uh, recently with a few people, and wanted to share it with you. So this is the idea of practice. So we're going to focus on selling the plan of care for, uh, for therapists, but really this concept can be applied to pretty much any any type of sales process and when we talk about sales you know our objective here is to gain buy-in so that people will attend their visits in this in this instance uh, so they achieve their goals and they're happy we're not trying to get people to do something that's not in their own self-interest we're not trying to manipulate or trick we're just simply trying to get people to understand why this is a good choice and why they should commit to it um, you know in, in lieu of, of other options or nothing at all so Step one is you have to have a process. You have to have a process in place documented. This can be, you know, Chad Madden's seven step killer exam. This could be any other documented checklist or process that, that you've, you know, heard from anybody else or that you've written down. Um, but you've got to have a process. The concept here of practice comes from Jack Daly. Uh, Jack Daly, uh, says that most sports teams are better than most businesses or run better than most businesses because of two things. The two things are they have a playbook and they practice. If you don't have a playbook, you don't have the process, you don't have it documented, then the question is what do you practice? If you're just practicing without anything written down, um, without a documented process, then you're kind of making it up as you go. That's not a good long-term solution. However, it might be the start of documenting your new process and put that in your playbook. So have a process. Step two is practice the process. And step three in this instance is practice the, this process with over while overcoming specific objections. So we're going to talk about what practicing and selling the plan of care means. And this is taken pretty much directly from a talk with Jack Daly here of the patient, the therapist, the observer. In his talk, he talks about um, sales people, the prospect, the subject, and an observer. And they, he, he's used this process with three salespeople, but here you can do it with therapists um, in, in, in a similar context. So 15-minute role play in each position. You can do 10 to 15 and then rotate. And the idea is that you're going to set the set the stage. We've have this kind of diagnosis, this kind of plan of care, and uh, you know, go ahead and explain it to the patient and see if you can get buy-in. When you do that, what you're going to do, if you start out, if you're the leader, you're the boss, you're the owner, be the observer and watch, and then be the patient. And, and listen, and then finish up being the therapist. Your goal here is not to demo it and show how awesome you are. Your goal here is to get your team to perform better, to get better patient buy-in. If better patient buy-in, more people achieve their goals, they finish their plan of care, you have happier patients, they're happy with the outcome, you, your therapist is successful, your patient is successful, and it's also great for business, which is a win all around. There aren't too many of those in the world, so we're gonna take that. So 15 minute role play, one person's going to be the patient, they can start throwing out like little uh, surprises and stuff or, or different things, hey I'm going to be traveling and then see how the therapist uh, adapts to that. But really what we want the therapist doing is following the process and namely, if you don't already have one, uh, write this stuff down, you're going to want to explain the best, most efficient plan of care to get the patient to their ultimate goals tell them that it's the best most efficient plan of care so that they can get to their goals if there was a better alternative then it's your obligation as a medical provider to get them to that or to explain it to them or, or refer them to the right person or what have you so the, if you know this is the best most efficient way for you to get there if that's the case make that case explain what it is your frequency your duration what it's going to entail and then here's the key here's the key how does that sound to you you're going to ask for objections. You're going to ask for how that ideal thing that we all learned in school and have practiced and, and what all, but how that ideal doesn't fit perfectly with their life. Okay? I can't afford it right now. My deductible's too high. I'm going to be traveling. I didn't think it was going to take that long. Is that really what it's going to take to do what, what I want? All those things are things that come up in our daily routine, but instead of taking time out to get better at them and understand how to address them, we practice on the go. And this 
usually takes us years to get good at it, whereas we, if we could speed up that process and get much better and learn from each other because we're all experiencing the same kinds of things, we're all uh, trying to solve the same problem, and if we would do that in a more collaborative fashion, we would be able to uh, make progress faster. So one of one, one person gets to be the patient, one person gets to be the therapist talking to them about the plan of care, they get to throw out objections, issues, problems with the plan of care, they have to address them, the other person observes silently and takes notes. Then you rotate, the patient becomes the therapist, the therapist becomes the observer, the observer becomes the patient, you do the same thing and then rotate again so that each person has been able to do all three. Okay, do all three positions, then and only then debrief and discuss. Now, if you're leading this exercise, if you're the manager or the, the boss in this kind of situation, you should go last as a therapist, and you should also consider going last in the debrief. Debrief, by its definition, means that you're going to be downloading information from the people who had the experience or had did the observations or what have you. Then you can certainly discuss. But hopefully, what we're looking for is for people to see how each other are doing things, how oh, I re it really resonated with me when you said that. It really clicked for me when you said that. Oh, that's a different way of doing it than I've done it before. That's interesting. I never thought about it that way. I like the analogy used. Whatever. But we're trying to figure out and, and learn from each other and speed up this process of learning and, and being able to address so we have better success with our patients. Once you've gotten to this, as we set up here, step three is now practice specific, uh, overcoming specific objections what you can do is start to identify objections. You can have a separate <clears throat> a little brainstorm about, well, what kind of objections are you running into? Uh, time always comes up. Oh, it's, it's, you know, I don't have time for that. This is really a priority issue. Okay, if I don't have time for that means I'm going to be doing other stuff. We've all got the same amount of time. It's, uh, you know, if it's not a priority, it's not a priority. How do we make it a priority? How do we tie back the ultimate outcome, the value of what it is we're offering to the investment, and I'm not talking just money, but the time and the energy, the effort, the inconvenience, all the other things that go into someone going through rehab, going through, you know, PTOT, speech, whatever it is. Sometimes there's literal pain involved. I've got to put up with discomfort. I've got to do things I'm not used to, and, and uh, you know, I want to make, I want to make that tie-in, the value to the, uh, to the solution, what the solution is going to get you to your ultimate goals. There will be uh, issues or objections around convenience, there will be con uh, objections around price. Price can be money, it can be high deductible, it can be copay, it can be cash pay, it can be any of these things, but it can also, do not discount this, it can also be the time, the effort, the shifting of priorities because I'm not going to get to do this other thing. There's a lot that goes into price. It's not just dollars, okay? And then substitution. Well, why don't I get an MRI? It's your, you know, we practice that, right? MRIs don't give you a solution. They might give you a little bit more information. Will it change the course of treatment? At this point in time, we don't think so. You're going to have to do this anyway. Okay, so let's make the time and energy money investment in the, in the solution rather than a little bit more information. Now, if it's going to potentially change the clinical decision making, what have you, that's a different issue. And if that's clinically appropriate, then you should advocate for that and get them to the right, to the right provider. Okay, and then finally there's credibility, and these are just a few objections I've listed here. You don't have to get crazy with objections. There aren't a lot more of them that we encounter, but as something comes up, you can certainly add to the list. But the last one here is credibility. Credibility means I don't believe you. Uh, Tommy went to a chiropractor three times for his whatever. Why, why is this going to take so much longer? You know, you have to address all those things. So, and credibility doesn't really come, I know this is going to be hard for some of the therapists, for by, with more letters after your name, credibility comes with understanding, with listening, with the empathy, with get, t letting that patient know, I get it, I understand your issue, hey, and I can fix it. 
together we can we have a solution we have a path to achieve your goals and get out of the situation I get it I can fix it here's the thing so that's going to be where your credibility really comes in and of course you're gonna have to deliver and follow up repeat the process with each objection you can go back and do this every week every couple weeks you can repeat it you can do it every month it'd be a great idea to work on it with your with your team and make sure that you can uh, address address all these and get better and better at it